All right. So now, in this lecture, I am going to be talking about uh, two different topics in one lecture here. But let's consider some other limits. And once we're done with other limits, with those other limits, then we are going to look into the squeeze theorem. Squeeze theorem. All right. So allow me to get started with the other limits. So what do I mean by other limits? So, so far, Throughout all the previous lectures prior to this point here, then any function you have learned, we've learned and including that we've learned all the algebraic techniques uh, to handle a, a limits problem a, a much more efficient, effectively and efficiently. Then, but we mostly focus on polynomials. So we've already learned how to find limits and how to handle limits on polynomials and those are basic limit laws that we have learned apply just flawlessly on these. And so we already learned how to handle that, those are functions. And we also learned rational functions. And for short, I call those uh, the rationals. Like say, back in, we've already had some example like this one right here, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. A function like this is a rational function. And or even rational function, rational-like function. Rationals or rational like. We say rational like. So rational like means uh, something like this. You got uh, a two square plus nine minus three over p square. So it has a little bit unusual square root involved, but it, it behaves a lot of time. Well, at least in my experience, I've, I've, I'm seeing these uh, behave so like a rational. So these are, the, the a lot of time I refer to as the rational like function. And so, but outside of these uh, families of functions, then we also need to consider a, a few other functions because uh, in your, throughout all your pre-calculus courses, you didn't only learn polynomials, you did not only learn about the rationals, you also learned about the trig function. So there are trig functions. So these functions, as long as they are functions, they get their own de attention to for us to study about how the limit behaves on, on these functions. And so, and then outside of those, uh, we have exponential functions. Function. And we also got the logarithm. And so, trig function here within our study, I am going to focus primarily on the just the, the two most basic trig functions sine of x and cosine of x. That's our plan for this particular lect lecture. Exponential function, or the a to the x, and primarily I'm going to be focusing on the e to the x, that famous e to the x. And then the logarithm, after being through with pre-calculus, you, know, you should have learned, you must have learned that uh, and uh, agree that all logarithm functions or all logarithm functions you know, behave the same way, very similar to each other. And so here I'm going to primarily focus on the natural log function when we discuss about the limit at different limit points on these uh, function. So let me start out with sine or cosine. Now I'm going to erase the other half of our discussion topic here and then uh, I'm going to come back to that. But so let's look at, uh, let's put up a couple problems here. So limit of uh, sine of x at let's say let x getting close to zero, that's one promote promoting problem. And how about let's promote an another one? Let's say limit same function sine of x, but letting x getting close to how about a uh, pi over four, 
positive pi over 4 and limit of sine of x as we're letting x get close to negative about a pi over 2. Okay, so ideally table approaches work and like I said, so these are completely brand new functions so we don't want to immediately tackle down with the algebra technique because we don't know how to, there is no power here. So we can apply the basic limit laws and that's what I, I, mean, I meant earlier by algebra technique. Uh, and uh, the only choice we have left is using either the table approach or using the graphical approach. In this particular problem, in, in, in this particular discussion here, allow me to give the explanation of how I approach the limits here using graphical approach. So let me now turn over to my computer screen. So the first limit we have is So here we go, here's the sign of x. And so the first limit, now so for the rest of our study here, I'm using decimals again as my graphing device and mm, anyone viewing this video, you don't need to worry about whatever the fancy thing I'm having here, it's just the controls and how I manipulate my graph. But so my sign of x is the graph in, in red right here. And so currently I set my limit point to be at zero for the first problem on the board earlier. And so let's put this limit point. So limit point in my, throughout my lecture is always gonna be color in blue. And so it has a dotted vertical line right through it. But zero on the x axis is here. And so now once again, the whole idea of limits, even though we're approaching things graphically, but the whole idea of limits now is that we need to approach. So that's why I produce uh, on, on my graph here, on my, on my graph here currently, I'm putting two other points away from the limit point. But the idea now is I'm gonna drag and let these points uh, come closer and closer to the limit point. So from the left-hand side, observe my, the height of the function. The height of the function as the black point is getting closer to zero. And on the graph right here, it looks like the height in green right there. And hopefully anyone can, can uh, notice what I'm, can follow along right here. But the height here in green, is showing that the function's vertical or output value is getting close to zero. And then same way as I'm approaching on the x-axis, now that's why I'm dragging my point on the, uh, from the right-hand side, my black point from the right-hand side, and I'm approaching zero from the right-hand side and getting closer to zero on the x-axis. Then my green height right here is also indicating that the function output is approaching it's uh, decreasing down to zero as well. And so as a matter of fact, so now if I put that line right here, so if I put that line in, in that dotted line right here, you can see that it's right on the x-axis. That height is y equals zero. But y equals zero here happens to be, so back on my, okay, and so back on, my screen right here. It looks like we estimated graphically that this limit here gives me that the answer to that limit sine of x and letting x get close to zero from both sides. We came to zero. But that zero over right here, it looks like it was agreeing with, for now it's just a, a little bit of a exploring work right here. So it seems like it's also the same with sine at zero. So zero happens to be, this limit that we found happens to also be the value for the function at sine of zero, and zero here is that limit point given. And so let's also, let's now look at the other function. I mean the, the other limit point, same function, but we switch to a different limit point. So let's say pi over four. And so now I'm gonna change my limit point to this limit point in blue. I am going to change that to pi over four, positive pi over four. And let me drag this point, these uh, two other points away. Okay, and uh, let me pull my graph. 
to fill up the screen here. All right, so Libet point now is at pi over 4. And now from the left-hand side, once again, I'm going to drag my black point closer and closer from the left-hand side, getting closer to that blue point on the x-axis, pi over 4. So as I come along, then the green height keep getting approaching to that, keep making its attempt to that height being indicated by this dotted black line right here. And as well on the right-hand side, from the right-hand side actually, then as I'm dragging my other black point getting closer to making its way to get closer to pi over 4 from the right hand side and that green height it did a, it had it had quite a few changes here it started out from being l low and then it hit higher but then it dropped down again and it keeps making it attempt it's attempting to make its way to to get close to this line this height right here being now let's see what that value is okay and so that value here looks to me like See in decimal, these values are getting higher and higher and higher. And as well, in that other one, those values are getting higher to point something. Okay? So the truth now is as that's why I. That's why I decided to approach uh, graphically here, but it looks like we can estimate that this limit also as x is coming to pi over 4. It looks like this limit came to positive square root 2 over 2. And how do I know that so quickly? I mean, if you're looking back at that line, that dotted line right here, that dotted line will happen right at and, and everything now is only an estimate, and we have our right to estimate and predict right here. But so it came, to pi square root 2 over 2 came out from sine of pi over 4. So we're treating sine of pi over 4 as, a, a, as an actual value, and so we estimate that as x is getting closer and closer to pi over 2 in this, in, in, in for this particular function here, from generally from both sides, then the function output value does get close to that value, that vertical value being square root 2 over 2, which is equal, which, which happens to equal to sine at pi over 4. And so moving on to the other problem right here, limit of the function sine of x, as we're letting x get close to negative pi over 2, then one more time, let's investigate. So my back on my screen here, but now I'm gonna switch the limit point to let's say negative pi over two. All right, so negative pi over two, and now the two black points are here. So as I'm getting closer and closer, the black point is getting closer to negative pi over two on the x-axis. Observe the green height right here. As I'm getting closer to negative pi over 2 from both sides right here, then the green height on, from on both sides looks like it attempts its way to make it down to negative 1. Okay? And negative 1 here is nothing but just. And once again, let me switch back to the, the blended view of the two screens right here. But the answer now is obvious. This limit as x is getting close to minus pi over 2 seems to get, so that overall output limit seems to get down to negative 1. But negative 1 here happens to be, an, or we know that it's the same as sine at negative pi over 2. Okay? And so now we can start forming a regulation right here. And so allow me to raise out all these work here and so generally we can find as a rule that for any for sine function in particular I should I shouldn't have said uh, for any but for sine function in particular and 
we're finding the limit of the sine function as x is getting close to any limit point. This is where I can say for any given limit point here. Then the, we, can, we can see that for, for this function sine of x, then it looks like throughout what we have investigated, then this limit, the, f the limit of this function as x is getting close to a does seem to get close to that value, whichever value that came out from sine of a, the value, the vertical value, or the output value of sine function at a. So that's one general understanding we can make regarding sine of x function. And now let's turn our attention over to cosine. So now I'm looking at, uh, let's put up a promoting problem right here, limit of cosine of x as we're letting x get close to, how about positive pi over 2, and then let's do, maybe let enough space for myself, and then let's do limit of cosine of x again, that we were letting x getting close to how about a zero, and then find the limit of cosine of x as we're letting x get close to negative pi over four. Right? So once again, I am now going to switch to my cosine function. All right, the cosine function is here, and the first problem is we're looking at at pi over two. So at pi over two, right? So now with the cosine function being in red, and let me now show some of the okay. So cosine over cosine of pi over two happened to be zero. But now let's find out but the story of limit is completely different. So we have a black line at a black horizontal line at y equals zero right here. But now on the x axis, I am purposely letting my black point coming closer to the limit point uh, pi over two. So from the left hand side, we can op anyone observing this can see that the height, the green height right here, is making its way to decrease down to zero. And on the, from the right hand side, as I'm dragging that black point closer and closer to the limit point from the right hand side and my green height here is getting higher and getting higher and m making its way to, uh, to get closer to that horizontal dotted line y equals zero. And so my prediction now comes out on the board. This must be the limit of this function cosine of x as we're approaching as we're letting x coming close to pi over 2, we're looking at that limit equals to 0. But 0 now can be understood as cosine of pi over 2 as well. Because cosine over 2, even though I, I never encourage to understand the taking limit is a plugging in, but here what I'm trying to show anyone viewing this video is that it does happen on cosine and even on sine of x function we worked with earlier that it does happen that cosine and and sine of x have uh, limit value happens to be equals to the function value evaluated, the function output evaluated at that particular li given limit point. And so here zero is our found limit that we estimated through the graph, but it turns out to be exactly or precisely equal to cosine of uh, pi over two, which is the limit point right here. So what about this one? Limit of the function cosine of x as we're letting x get close to zero. All right, so on my graph again, this time, let me move my limit point to here, to zero. And so from the left-hand side, observe the green height that changing the green vertical height that's changing as I'm getting that black point closer to the blue point, the limit point from the left hand side. And now I'm gonna get that black line, that black point I mean, 
to be closer to the limit point on the x-axis. And once again, keep observing the, the behavior of the, the green height here. So it keeps making its way to hit 1. That horizontal line now is being right at 1 right here. And so once again, what we can estimate here is that this limit looks like it equals 1. And that limit here equals 1. But one th that value 1 happens to be the same uh, as cosine of 0. That so if we substituted that limit point into the actual function, we come up with a value that happens to equal to the limit value here as well. So it's just something that I want everybody to, to realize. And then the same way here, let's one more time investigate the same function, but at a different limit point at, as a at another limit point here. So once again on the graph as we are right at negative pi over 4. So that blue point is here on the x-axis. The blue point is here. That, that's our limit point. And now these are the other points from the left and from the right hand side. So as I'm getting my, as I'm letting my x value, which which is represented by the the black point, get, getting the x value closer to the limit point on the x-axis, then the green height. See when it, I chose the starting point here being about a negative three pi over four, and the height was some negative height, but the height became less negative, less negative, and cross over and become zero and start gaining height and keep rising and rising, but get close to that blue, I mean I mean black. Get close to that height being indicated by the, this black dotted line right here. And then from the right hand side, as I'm dragging the black point closer and closer to the our limit point here, then, then the height, the height got higher, got higher, got higher, but then eventually drop and seems to drop to that value, which is about the height indicated by this black dotted line again. And so this black dotted line here, in my experience, it is a positive. The value is about a positive square root 2 over 2. And so the positive square root 2 over 2 here is indeed precisely equal to cosine at the limit point substituted in at negative pi over 4. And so here we can form another gen uh, generality here regarding cosine of x at any given limit point here. So Work, if we are working with cosine of x function and we're letting we are finding the limit of this function as we're letting x get close to some given or any given limit point a and here once again I'm approaching things completely from both sides so we can easily find that limit by substituting the limit point value a into our cosine function and that's how we can obtain the limit so that's how easy it is to find the limits for sine and cosine function. So that's another limit to understand and then to keep being aware of. And now let's turn our focus over to the exponential function. And primarily I am going to be looking at the e to the x function. So allow me to once again break my board into three separate space here and we're going to investigate three little problems. So how about let's find limit of e to the x function, just that simple e to the x function. And here is x is getting close to how about zero, okay? And then same function e to the x, but we want to find the limit as x is getting close to how about the negative one. Okay, and uh, another one here, e to the x, as we're letting x get close, so find the limit of e to the x by letting x get close to about uh, 2. Okay. And so let's turn over to our graph. Uh, 
All right, so back on our graphing view over here on our graphing device, then let's now look at our e to the x function. So the first limit that we were looking at here is that limit at All right, so the blue point is being right here at x equals 0. So this is blue point is our limit point. So now I am going to get closer to 0 so from the left-hand side. So notice how my black point on the x-axis is moving closer to that limit point. Right there. But then as my black point is moving closer to the limit point from the left-hand side, then the height, notice how the green height is changing and getting close to that, making its way to that value. So let me now put that horizontal black dotted line up over here. Okay. And anyone viewing this video, once again, you don't need to pay attention to whatever is going on on, on the left-hand side panel over here. All right. So it looks like as I'm getting closer on the x-axis, getting closer to 0, then my green height is making its way to hit 1. The height being indicated by this dotted line is the vertical height. And so, same way, and I can even zoom this in, zoom this in a little further. Okay. So, if I'm putting in some more zooming, then we can see that even we can keep we can keep getting closer and getting closer. And on the other hand, as I'm getting closer to zero from the right hand side, we started out with x equals one. We got some height here, and now I'm getting closer. Notice how my green height is changing. My green height is losing its height. But in the end, it's losing lo slower and slowlier and slowlier, and seems to make its way its way to with that horizontal that horizontal line or vertically the height is here at x y equals one, and so and so now we are ready for some conclusion. So it looks like this limit here comes out over to to one as estimated through the graph, and so. But 1 here, in the word of exponential function, then 1 happens to be exactly e to the 0 equals 1. And so knowing this, e to the 0 equals 1, it, it's not really a coincidence right now. It's just something I point out for you to, to, to understand and to realize about. But so as we're approaching x to the limit point 0, then it looks like we came to that. We estimated that. We came out with that limit, that vertical limit being one, which is precisely e to the to the zero. So let's now turn our focus to the other function. I mean, the same function, but to a different limit point over here. All right. So now e to the x again. Now I'm changing my. Changing this to actually negative one. All right. So negative one, the blue limit point is here on the x-axis, and now I'm gonna try to get closer and closer to negative one from the left-hand side, and I'm gonna try to get closer to negative one from the right-hand side, and look at the way how my two green height here is changing. Right? So they from both sides the the two both of the two green heights here seems to make its way to that height being in the black dotted line right here. Okay, and that black dotted line it's a little hard to estimate the the, the actual value, but here I can tell you that it, this is going to be one over E. And one over E is precisely one over E is precisely e to the negative 1. So this negative 1 value is indeed, I forgot to turn on the other planet screen right there. But so we found out that this limit e to the x, as x getting close to negative 1, came out to be 1 over e, that black dotted line. But 1 over e was really e to the negative 1. Or if we can think of that here as we substituted the limit point negative 1 into our exponential function. Okay, and so one more demonstration. So e to the x. Now we're letting x get close to two. All 
right, so getting closer to Right, so one coin's on the left and one coin's on the right. Okay, and let me put it in some in some further zoom here because otherwise I won't be able to see all the heights there, especially when it's equal to. All right, now I can zoom in a little bit. So from the left hand side, okay, I'm getting closer, and the height is trying to hit that horizontal black dotted line right there. And from the right hand side, as I'm getting closer to the limit point blue on the on the x-axis, then my green height seems to get down to that horizontal dotted black line as well. And so now putting the two together, again I can make an, an estimate that this limit turns out to be allow me to use my own experience to lead you here, but it, this is E squared. And E squared happens to be the same as uh, 2 substituted into your e to the x function. All right. And so now at this point, we are ready for another generality here as well. All right. So for e to the x function, and generally it should be the same for any other the, the exponential function in the same exponential family here. The limit of e to the x as x is getting close to any given limit point here. That will be simply the numerical value of e to the a power. All right, so what about the logarithm function? So let's look at this primary function of all the logarithm functions right here. How about natural log of x? Okay. So as this, at this point right here, after everybody, ha anyone viewing this video have seen quite a few demonstrations and allow me to start getting a little brief right here. So let's consider natural log of x, but I'm taking limit as x is getting close to one, and then we're going to try to find and remind yourself that the domain for natural log of x, the domain here is just a reminder, the domain for natural log of x is all the x values greater than zero. So according to the domain for this natural logarithm function, natural log function, then we, will n we should never have a a negative limit point because it, it's not even you know inside the domain we, we can't even do anything about it so here I'm using completely for all these uh, problems here for all these trials I'm only gonna stay with the positive uh, x value so and then here let's say find the limit of natural log of x by letting x getting close to 2 from both sides Okay, so let's quickly investigate this. And so back on my screen, right, a natural log function is here. So when x equals 1, this is our limit point right here. So now once again, getting closer to 1 from the left-hand side and getting close to 1 from the right-hand side, we're looking at those two vertical green heights. And let me zoom in further so that everyone can, anyone viewing the video can, can still make some you know, distinguishment right here. All right. All right, so as I'm getting closer to zero from the left-hand side and getting closer to zero from the right-hand side, look at the, the way how my graph behaved right there. And so in that way, I can see and I can estimate that this limit will turn out to be a zero. But zero here will happen to be the same as natural log of one, where that value, that limit point is being plugged into the function. Okay? And 
now let's consider this limit right here and and everyone one is already hopefully have a, a clear uh, idea of where it's going so on my graphing screen again and let me now move my point my limit point to two all right and so Probably a better idea if we can put zoom it out a little bit. All right, so natural log of x and the limit at limit point two. So if I'm getting closer to two from the left hand side and I'm getting closer to two from the right hand side, the two green heights from the left and from the right, they are both getting closer to that vertical height being indicated by the red. I mean by the black dotted line right here, which is well, for for if just simply looking at it, it's hard to estimate. But this is exactly going to be natural log of two, where this natural log of two happens to be that limit point substituted into the the function. All right, so we can now have a generality. So keep in mind that for your domain of logarithm, any logarithms, then we have the domain is only those x values being positive. So we definitely have to choose limit point within the domain right here. So for any logarithm, and primarily here I'm working, I'm, I'm looking at natural log. So for natural log of x, when x is getting close to any limit point, but keep in mind again, the limit point here has to be within the domain. And so that will turn out that will turn out to be natural log of a. That is how we can find limit for for logarithm function. But then let's consider this problem, which is quite special as well. But let's look at what about limit of natural log of x. But now I'm going to let x get closer to 0 from the right hand side. Now notice 0 is not in the domain, but I actually, but look at my notation, I want to get close. See, if remember the idea of uh, doing limits, we will never plug or we, nev we will never substitute the value here. Here, just we, we found out that our estimated value happened to be these uh, values substituted in, but that's not the method to find in once we understand this then anytime later on we go back to natural log then we can we can substitute in but in the end ultimately finding a limit still never be the same with substituting it so this problem is tricky in the sense that zero is outside of the domain but keep in mind again we're only getting close to zero so that mean and from the right hand side that means these values are still completely in the domain it's itself so let's look uh, at that through the graph here but so on my graphing device, all right, and allow me to hide away this. I'm going to hide away the. All right, so the limit point e e x equals zero is here, but now if I'm letting the value on the x axis from the right hand side getting close to x equals zero from the right hand side look at my height right here the green heights keep dropping down negatively and negatively and negatively and that's the way how your natural natural logarithm function look and so and I can even zoom in further and the height keep dropping down further negative further negative so that tells me based on observation through the graph then we have now formulating, we have now our understanding that this limit has to be a negative infinity. That explains through the graph. Okay.